Uh, we're a charity, we're a charity with a big idea at its heart, which is the idea of democracy, the idea of participative uh, democracy. And while there are many people of goodwill, many innovators, many entrepreneurs, I think still people look to involve in the community uh, that is involved at the heart of that. That democracy, although it is a noun, technically, we think, should think of it as a verb. It's a thing you do, and if you're not doing it, and if lots of people aren't doing it, it atrophies. Its, auto, its default state is stagnation, and it's only when it's treated as a labour that it remains alive and relevant. That actually it's not just about power, it is about participation. Every single day here in Parliament we have debates and discussions about issues that I know 650 people alone cannot resolve. So the challenge for all of us isn't just to find the right answer, but find the right way of working together. That for me is the future of democracy. The future of democracy has to change because the world is changing. I did philosophy and a philosopher called Spinoza who wrote a political treatise and the chapter on democracy was unfinished and there's a lot of debate around whether it was deliberately unfinished because democracy is never finished or whether he just died. Um. There is now a sub-discipline of epistemic democracy which essentially says part of the purpose of a democracy isn't just to represent the people in their votes, is actually to tap into the knowledge of the people to make government better. For me, when I see part of the patient process that seem really exciting, it's when they're in between the zone of reality and possibility. And it's that fertile zone, that moment when you're, say, on the chase for a relationship or setting up a new project. But when you're in that zone between an exciting possibility, but you know that you have steps to get there. And I think that poses some really interesting questions about the way in which organising, consultation processes are actually being turned into research agendas. I have a real concern that if we lose that spark of excitement, that spark of human vitality, then actually we suck the lifeblood from that. And for me, the big um, inspiring thing about watching deliberative democracy isn't necessarily that you change decisions, that policymakers are better informed. It's the impact that the process has on the individual participants. That people who think of themselves as not being interested in politics suddenly feel like they have something to contribute. For that to happen, it's got to make sense for government as much as it makes sense for citizens. Because government operates, the way that government operates is for a reason. It's because we need to understand where the money is going, who is accountable. And we are uh, a sort of a small group of people in the cabinet office who have been working with Involve, who've been trying these things. And it's not easy. It's interesting. It makes for better policy and plans, but it's challenging on both sides. So what we're trying to figure out is how we sell the benefits, because the benefits are obvious. And it's just, I think people will typically in government fall to the quickest way to achieve something. So Democracy isn't just something that happens in public institutions. We have to start, we have to pursue democracy in the private sector as well. And that might mean tinkering around with governance <coughs> frameworks, but it also means pursuing a vision for democracy in the way in which decisions unfold in private sector institutions, in companies. A lot of the time, the conversations about public engagement are about service delivery, domestic policy issues, but what about these big issues that are really important, about the UK's role in the world, about Trident, about how we work via the EU? Those conversations tend to not be held, and in fact, having a strategy on these issues tend to be a very elitist process, but if we want to go to an emergent strategy approach where we engage the population, how do we actually do that effectively on these really big issues? Many things you think are going to change, don't change as fast as you expect, but if you then think, ah, oh, they're never going to change, you get it wrong. If they do change, but they just take a bit longer. And I think the same is true of, of democracy.